All right, yeah, we're live on stream. Every everyone, um, I mean, we're we're really doing this to record a podcast anyway. But everyone who's tuning in, welcome. This is the Space Case Space Opera stream. This is Space Case Alpha. I am your dungeon master. I suppose it's a game master in this game. Ain't no ain't no dungeon. Um, but my name is Charlie Chop Shop. I'll be hosting this game here on the Chop Shop Network, and we'll be also posting the podcast of this if you're listening in um this is our first episode and welcome um and i want to say hello to all of my lovely players that have joined me some cast changes have happened unfortunately we're going to bring in some more people too in the future um but going around here we have uh ruben from kid tested mother approved podcast what's up what's up everybody how you guys doing wonderful how are you ruben i'm good i'm excited i'm i have been thinking about this game for a very long time about how this I'm gonna make this fictional old man's life miserable and I can't wait it's been festering since we've like conceptualized the game it's been festering in our all of our minds um, we also have Falseries how you doing Falseries hello I'm uh, doing quite well uh, and, and uh, are you excited for tonight's session my friend I am I am uh, I'm really digging the futurific sci-fi aspect of it and stuff i just want to kill some ships in battle yes in space. i do want to have some space battles very soon um and last and certainly least we have professional troll easy sailor <laughs> how are you doing easy i'm doing pretty well good glad to have you boy and uh let's go around let's start off um this is kind of a session zero and a session one all wrapped up together. Oops. Um, so we're going to talk about our characters, how they may know each other, how they've come to be where they are for a little bit first, and then we are going to um, get into the gameplay. Um, actually started off. So who wants to tell us about their character a little bit to start off? Um, I can go first. I can keep it. Um... My guy's name is Guy Flannel. Uh, he is 90 years old, and he lives on Modesty, uh, which is his whole thing is he's like a he's like a gas station attendant. He's like a space gas station attendant, essentially. Um, but he's like also a farmer. Like so, he's just like think of every like a nice old man you've ever seen in any movie or just anything. That's him. He's just that sweet nice old man. Um, all his family is either left Modesty or is dead. Uh, his wife is dead. His kids have left. Uh, he doesn't keep in contact with them or anything. Uh, and one day he is starting to have these weird flashes to his memory where his memories are not the same as what they used to be. And it, it's less like, I can't remember my wife's face, and more like he's remembering his wedding exactly but the person that is his wife is not his wife and like locations are different on certain memories and he's starting to like question like is it this implant from that allows him to control his drones or do his wife and kids not even exist is he just is he just some sort of robot does he have a drone implant yet i don't think he has it yet right Oh, we, dude, okay, so we talked about that. I wasn't sure if he had it yet or not. No, yeah, it's a fairly, it's actually an extremely expensive piece of equipment that you'll have to pay to get implanted. But maybe, um, yeah, I would say it'd, it'd probably be something else if he's questioning it um, so thus yeah. far. But still, good, I love it. And I'm glad you reminded me of that because I had kind of forgotten that you had been having those <laughs> memory flashes. I like that. And I also like the idea maybe he's getting some flashes of memories that he feels like aren't even his yeah like like he he remembers like a vacation with like a family that is like not his family the person he remembers is not him cool like i'm i'm, I'm down with just it's almost like his memories are like somebody's channel surfing oh i like that that's a good way to describe it all right great um we'll come back to to uh gee in a minute to guy and talk about how you got um onto the the spaceship Nightingale. Um, but for now, let's jump to the next person, someone else. Um, I will then. Uh, so I'm playing Hikari Jinsoku. He's a uh, recent graduate of Ichi Ichiko City's pilot uh, school. 
He was recruited to the school by uh, being very good at virtual reality video games. And, um, and yeah, he, was... He, was an e- he was an esports player that, uh, yeah, was recruited by the school and he just recently graduated. Awesome. And yeah, he's like the top of his piloting class. He was so good at esports, they had to make him a, a pilot. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's that? What's that video game? Uh, the one where you fly around. Never mind. It's like the one where, um, yeah, just your basic like uh, battle, uh, Ender's game type uh, situation. I love it. Or um, yeah. I was gonna say Star Fox, but <laughs> Star Fox. Yeah. Uh, besides that, yeah, he's um, uh, he's just after graduating, he's been um put on given the option of putting on different ships for uh internship and okay. uh he decided i guess to go with the nightingale and uh yeah all right um wonderful and jupiter so jupiter is uh he was he was born on i already forgot the name of the planet hold on i just had it um, um the evil planet bad planet what the hell is it called? I can't remember either. Kalani? It's in the Href, in the Hrefna system. No, we changed it. It's um. No, let me look that up for you real quick. It's called Kanos. Kanos, oh, yeah, yeah. Jupiter's from Kanos, and uh, he was born into this ultra militaristic society where everybody has a place, there's an order to things, and he's just awful at everything. And he's a big clumsy idiot. So he, he's kind of he's kind of gone out. And uh, he, he was doing some light clerical work, and uh, even then he was pretty bad at that. But luckily, he has some light psych- psionic powers to help him type. That's right. He's like physically awful. Like the only reason he can perform anything is because his psychic powers are like guiding him, right? Yeah. Yeah. At, at any given moment. All right. Can't even type on a keyboard. <laughs> I love it. And he does he have um, some sort of physical malady or something? Um, I, does stupid fingers count? He's just, <laughs> I guess, I guess so. He, he's, he got struck with an old case of the stupid fingers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, he's like, actually a big, strong guy. You know, he should be, like, the perfect, like, soldier. But he's just, he's so clumsy that he, he can't swing any sort of melee weapon. You know, he can't aim correctly. He can't even type. He can only type because of the powers. <laughs> awesome. Um, so those are our three cast members. Um, now let's talk about how each of you ended up being on the Nightingale, which is this uh, huge kind of transport cargo ship. And actually, I can tell you a little bit more about the Nightingale first. Let's see. Um. Where you at, Nightingale? Oops. Sorry, I'm just searching my notes here. Here we go. So the Cervantes Corporation uh, owns this ship. It is a very large industrial corporation that you are all probably aware of through your various dealings. Um, Cervantes is known for uh, mining, spa- asteroid mining specifically, um, fuel mining, um, cargo transport, um, and a few other things um, besides that, but mostly um, industrial applications. Like manu- they do some manufacturing and things like that as well. But they own this gigantic, um, it's a B class cargo frigate, quite large. Um, it's mainly a cargo vessel, although it has some transport cabins, and they will sell extra space um, as transport as they kind of make this regular route kind of around what's called the Autora Loop. Um, they will kind of rent out space, you know, in their cabins for, for travelers and so forth. Um, the crew is minimum of 10, maximum of 80 people. It's probably at about a little over half capacity right now. Um, Crew-wise, it's probably crewed by about 40 people or so, maybe 44 um, passengers' quarters hold up to 40 people as well. Um, there are eight luxury cabins, one of which the captain stays in. The other seven are 
able to be rented out for um, a much heftier price. Um, they're a lot nicer, more like a hotel. Whereas y'all's is more like a hostel, kind of, where you're staying. Um, let's see. So the ship route, I'll flip you all over to the map here real fast. So the kind of southwest corner, oh, you're already on the map. The southwest corner of the system here um, is kind of the most populous and well uh, established and, you know, has the most infrastructure out of any of the places kind of around this sector. It's a big sector. Um, but everything kind of north and east of you, I know those aren't space directions, but on the flat map it makes sense. Uh, everything north and east of you, pretty much everything else out in the sector is kind of like outer rim space. You are like right on the outer rim of human space. Um, cool. This loop right here, which is a very common route for traders and for like this, you know, this ship and many others, um, the Atora loop is a very commonly traveled trade route, but it's like the last trade route. Now there are some uh, drill courses where you can you know drive out into further out star systems in this sector um, But they're not super commonly traveled um, So, you know most civilization kind of sticks down here. So all of you are from one of these bottom four uh, Systems which is the Gallia system the ESO system the Krati system or the Hrefna system um, And right now, let's see. Where is the ship at currently? So you've all, for some reason, purchased transport um, um, aboard the Nightingale. Um, and right now it's heading from Crates to Essos, which is uh, planetary-wise, try and stick to the planet names here, Cantho, which is like, Cantho is like the big main cultural center world around here. Um, it rules over a couple small planets in the system next door. So yeah, the ship is going from Cantho down to the Esos system there, which is home to Modesti, which is where you are from, Guy. Modesti is like this outpost planet for people that are heading deeper into the, the sector here, because you have to make this bigger jump. You have to jump more than one hex um, to get to the next system there. So only ships with an upgraded engine can do as such. So most stop at Modesti as kind of an outpost there. Um, what else is in ESOS, the next door neighbor system? Um, I believe it, does, it doesn't really matter. There is one other planet in ESOS, but it's not um, really settled by modern technology. There might, there's probably life there, or there is life there, but it's primitive life, so most people skip that kind of small next door neighbor planet. But I believe you all are traveling from Cantho to Modesti. That's your current trip. Um, and, cool. then, and then further into the sector as well. Um, your ultimate goal should be um, planet Asta in the meta system. And Asta is a night world. Uh, it's also a very industrial world. It used to be home to like Terran governments or Earth government bases um, that were abandoned and repurposed for industrial things. A lot of companies and corporations are setting up camp here um, on planet Asta. And that's where you're going. You're either heading to Asta or Gidus, which is a little further. And Gidus uh, is home to some large cities and also a huge exporter of technology, um, specifically cloning technology. It's the only place where that's legal. And it's rumored that Gidus is kind of ruled over by this weird semi-immortal race of humans. Um, so those are the places you're heading. You all have a reason that you're going to the industrial planet, the night planet, Asta or you're going to the, the planet Gidus, which is kind of a, a engineering-based area. Um, but you boarded the ship somewhere probably on Cantho, or Cantho's next door neighbor in the same system, which is planet Eumedes. Um, so and is that myself included, Charlie? Yeah, so or you have- am, am I waiting? You are heading to Modesti as well, like back home, or you're going deeper cool. into the system. It's up to you. You're the only right. one who doesn't have to be heading deeper into the system, I guess. Cool. Um, but so yeah, so let's talk about how you came to to purchase passage on the on the Cervantes Nightingale. Um, why you are heading from Cantho to either Asta or Gidus, um, or just deeper into the system, um, and like kind of the events that led up to you getting passage on the ship. Um, since we're coming from Cantho, 
uh, Hikari's probably purchased uh, transport in order to uh, leave planet, and uh, he's probably uh, going to Ousta, mm -hmm. the night planet, uh, to begin his search for relics. Okay. Um, he wants to find relics to make him famous, I guess, to make a name for himself so he gets like better jobs or you know he, he wants to be to money for ships he wants to be like a very renowned pilot like that's his goal to be a famous yeah, pilot yeah okay yeah he's he's uh he's kind of low-key waiting for like a battle to go down so he can earn his like wings i see yeah. And, and yeah uh asta would be a great place for that because they're the a lot of the abandoned Terran bases have been repurposed into factories and warehouses and things like that. But there's still a huge chunk of like military bases um, left over from the Terran mandate that are just like empty and and considered dangerous. You know, people don't know it's not really a great idea to go exploring those. So maybe your hope is to get there, explore some of those unexplored bases, and find some technology the the Terran mandate left behind hundreds of years previous. Um, great, that's wonderful. Who else? Uh, I know for me, my guy is just, he's just looking for answers, but he has no idea where to look. So he's just kind of along for the ride at this point. Um, and especially, too, with him being, like, a sweet, nice old man, he definitely, like, tries to become friends with a lot of, like, the employees on the ship because he, like, understands that, you know, this is an easy work and they're doing their best. Like, he's just, like, a very understanding old man. Um so I like to think that they kind of all know him as almost like a regular. Okay, so maybe you've taken this shit back and forth a few times to. Yeah. To camp like, like, it like the rig the the people on the ship all like him, but they're all kind of like they feel bad for him because yeah. he just wants answers, but like he doesn't know how to do that, and nobody really knows how to help him. I feel like he's so, like he's like a regular at a McDonald's, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Walmart greeter. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, but but that that's kind of the thing. Like, I like the idea of him almost being like a space Walmart greeter, where it's like, he doesn't really work here, but like he's he's nice to everybody, and and you know he almost acts like he works there, like he like helps clean up, and they're like, no guy, like this isn't like, you're okay. <laughs> Great, um, that's really good. So I'm gonna say maybe this time you were going to Canto. Um, to talk to or to try and talk to a representative from a, a well-known co corporation called Codacorp. Cool, I'm into it. Um, possibly because Codacorp is known for producing a lot of virtual intelligence bots, like bots that are, you know, hyper intelligent like humans, not quite on the level of AI where they're surpassing us. Um, but they do, yeah, they make androids and also like worker and helper bots and things like that. Um, and they've also co been contracted by m multiple military companies to kind of make these virtual intelligences. Codacorp is kind of the apple of this system. They also make a ton of consumer electronics. Um, so like cool. your, so your mom's, you know, kitchen bot like is a Codacorp kitchen bot or whatever it is. Um, so maybe you went there to kind of try and get a meeting with these people and get some information about um, like memory cortexes and see if they could scan you or anything like that and they just kind of are like like you're like in like a corporate like high rise like talking to a secretary on the first floor and she's like no like I don't think we can you know yeah, and I, I like the idea too that he's wearing like overalls like he, he looks like the most like countryest of just like down home like he's got overalls he's got like a white button up underneath uh, well, and well so what's he like What's his background again? It's a worker, right? Yeah, worker. So he, he, he's got the, they're like oil stained. Um, yeah, and like he actually has, he does hold a job, right? Or he recently got fired or something like that? Yes, yeah, so he, he was like the, uh, like the almost gas station attendant. So he has dealt with all sorts of people from all sorts. Like he doesn't really have a political affiliation because well, he knows like, well, if these people are bad, then they're bad. Mm -hmm. But like his whole thing is like, look, people need gas. I help people. Like that, yep. that's his whole thing is he just wants to help. If somebody needs help, he's going to help them. So he's been just doing this kind of gas station attendant gig around kind of the spaceport. Um, Cause Modesti all yeah. just kind of one big spaceport, you know, with a little yeah. ta town built into it. Cool. So maybe you do a little mechanic work on a ship here or there and uh, you know, re help yeah. people refuel and wash, wash spaceships. Uh, um, sterilize any kind of you know shit that may have got on them in space so on 
and I think on this ship too, like I'm like helping, and it's like like I'm like some like there might be like a new guy's like I don't know what to do, and I just kind of come over and like do the job. Cool. Like don't worry, I I got you. Nice. Um, so to what is the name of the company um, on Modesti that you are employed by? Like it's like a gas, like a space comp or a, a a spaceport company, you know, some sort of charter. Yeah. Um, they maybe own a private landing pad that they. Yeah. So this is kind of what kind of freaks them out too. Is the company is called Oldman's, like, O L D M E N S. Okay. And he kind of just started to realize, like, now wait a minute, like, he's starting to be concerned if he's like an app. Like this whole thing is like, is he just like a animatronic almost? Where uh -huh. any of these Oldman's gas stations have a guy <laughs> have a, a guy model attendant uh i love it uh, you should have just named it alzheimer's fuel um <laughs> oh, no. but yeah oldman's fuel co um is the company you you've been working for there um and you've probably been there like a long time like at, at this point with your memory thing you're like kind of not sure how long you've been working there maybe yeah all right great um so uh juniper jupiter how did you come to be on the Cervantes Nightingale? Well, I uh, I was kind of awful at everything on my planet of uh, Kanos. So I, I they, they kind of didn't want me around anymore. They kind of gave me a small chunk of money and said, here, get on this ship when it goes by and uh, go find your own way somewhere else. Now, here's what I want to know. So normally, uh, no one is that friendly. I mean, I mean, people are that friendly, but it had to be like someone cared about you for some reason to help you get off the planet. Normally, if you try and abandon your post or you're not fit to do your job, a lot of times they'll just extract your brain and use it uh, for some technology um, or just kill you and burn you for fuel. Well, they, they checked my brain and they didn't want it. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, kind of got a couple screws loose. Um, well, so why didn't they burn you for fuel? Someone somewhere on this planet had to have a soft spot for you and help you get out of there, I feel like. Or like at I least mean, forge some paperwork for you or something. I don't know. Yeah, I I have an uncle. Or Jupiter has an uncle. Yeah. And that uncle was the only reason they didn't end up in the dead baby pile at birth. Okay. So maybe well, you know, it's probably something along those lines. Maybe the uncle was a proper hero or proper warrior and uh, was kind of well respected. Too. What was his name? Yeah, I wasn't very good in school, so I didn't pay attention. Uncle what? No, I was making a Superman joke. Oh, what's your uncle? <laughs> What'd you say? I said Jor-El. Oh, yeah, jor -El, Yeah. No. What's your uncle's name? Cateris. Love it. That's a pretty bomb warrior name. Yeah, it's a good Spartan name. Because um, basically the the Canosian, the, the Legion is more or less space Spartans. Um, wonderful. So you got off planet. Uh, this is probably the last trip that uh, the Cervantes is going to make to Canos. Because Canos has been really kind of starting to commit acts of war on neighbors. They recently took over um, a nearby planet. Hey, um, hey, hey, that was not an act of war. We thought they had weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would have been so topical 15 years ago. I was gonna say topical. Wait, no, it's topical now. <laughs> With Iran? We were watching, uh, what movie were we watching? where they were talking about oh lauren and i watched uh, half nelson last night with uh ryan gosling ryan gosling yeah and there's a part where they're talking about like bush hunting for wmds and i was like god this makes me feel old as shit man mm. i just watched lady bird and that's set in 2002 oh yeah it's like i was like yeah i remember all this <laughs> um okay oh. so oh go ahead sorry no 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 i was gonna say the grinch came out uh 2000 It's weird, man. I saw that in theaters. Um, okay, so Diametra. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did too, yeah. Diametra is the name of the planet. Uh, it is the next door neighbor. Like, it's in the same system as Kanos. Kanos is a two-planet system. Or uh, Hrefna is where Kanos lives. 
Um, and there's a smaller planet next door called Diametra. Diametra um, is home to a lot of gathering of Lazarus followers, which is kind of a neo-Christian religion, pretty popular in this kind of corner of human space. Um, and so they were weak, uh, partly because they were only there to really practice their religion and not develop any kind of military. Um, so Diametra was seized by the Legion of Canos. Um, and part of the reason a lot of people speculate that the Legion of Canos wanted it is because Diametra was known for um, having a psychic training school, which is pretty rare. They had an academy to train scions there. And that was called the Yeardly Psionics Academy. So Kano's kind of seized it and is now running this academy and trying to train as many psychics as they can as fast as possible for their military efforts. Um, so this is probably the last time, like I said, that the Cervantes or the Nightingale will come to Kano's is when, um, when Jupiter boards it. And it leaves kind of back around to Cantho and trying to loop back up to Modesti. So you've been on the ship the longest. You've probably been on here a uh, a couple days before everyone else arrives um, at Cantho. So yeah, um, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, Jupiter. What was your background? I don't remember. Hold on just a second. Sure. I think it was merchant. Yeah, maybe. I yeah, I think it was. Okay. And um So tell me how that ties in with your backstory. Um are you, is it something you're still pursuing or are you no longer a merchant? They just kind of they stuck you in that sector of workers um because of your poor abilities or Yeah, yeah, they just kind of stuck me behind a counter and you know, here give you know, do small transactions to help the real men and women of, of our society. So I feel like it was even more like more of kind of a quarter master position even. Um, gun, where gun they're, shop cashier. Yeah, where they're like buying it with like, you know, Canos credits um, that they get, you know, rewarded for work and things like that. Um, cool. And Hikari, your background is pilot, yeah? Yeah. And yeah, we talked about how you had gone through um, pilot, the piloting academy. Um, was there a name for that academy? Was and it's on Kanto, yeah. Yeah, it's in Ichiko City, and it's pretty just. It's just uh, Ichiko so, Pilot. Um, okay. So maybe academy. Ichiko. How about Ichiko Aerospace Academy, possibly? Yeah. Yeah. IAA. Well, it's not aeros. Is it aerospace? Yeah, aerospace. If you're piloting spaceships, yes. Okay. And technically, flying an airplane is still aerospace as well. Like that Boeing is called Boeing Aerospace, I believe. Um, yeah, so Ichiko Aerospace Academy, they train space pilots, um, so forth. You graduated top of your class. You've been kind of bumming around this area of the sector for a while, looking for work, and you heard a rumor, I guess, that uh, there might be some relics and some Terran Mandate bases on... Uh, mm -hmm. on yeah, some um, internet 4chan posts. <laughs> talking about uh, relics being spotted on uh, Jiro's list. That's what the the local Craigslist is called. <laughs> Jiro's yeah, list. Yeah, we got to come up with. Yeah, there's Jiro's list, and then there's the the four chain. We got to come up with. One. Yeah, A, uh, five chain. Five chain, yeah. <laughs> and also Facebook. Of course, everyone's on Facebook. Oh wow! How did I not even? <sighs> Well, wow. I can't. I can't take credit for that. There's many other stars of that number of streams that that they talk about their Facebook accounts and stuff. So I can't take credit for that. But uh, I still use MySpace. <laughs> still on MySpace. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Um, well, that's funny because the the Nightingale actually runs on the Alta Vista search engine. That's like the that's the AI that it uses. It's Lycos. Um, okay, great. So. You're all aboard the Nightingale um, on your way to Modesti. It's going to be about um, an eight-day trip on your way to the outpost planet of Modesti, I believe. Let me double-check on that. I have a timeline here. Nightingale arrives at Eumedes. So, yeah, you all board the ship. You travel for a few days, like two or three days, um, in the system here. You make a little spike drive 
to the next planet in the same star system, which is Eumedes. Eumedes is a very rich planet, very intellectual planet, but a very small population. They live in like these highly engineered bubble cities on the harsh planet's surface. It's just kind of like a, a wasteland there, but um, a very intellectual cast lives there. Um, you stop at the spaceport. Um, a few Neo-Lazarites get on, um, members of the Gathering of Lazarus uh, kind of get on and off. Some merchants get off, other merchants board. Um, yeah, and the ship kind of fills back up and leaves Eumedes, and now on its way to Modesti will take um, about another five days um, or six days to arrive there. So the, the ship ferries out uh, deeper into space all the way out to the edge of the star system. Um, and all of you can feel like the engines charge up for a, a, what they call a spike drive, which is flying through metadimensional space or faster than light travel, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the ship bursts in this metadimensional space. You see stars just like tear past the windows of the ship until there's nothing but streaks and just like lightning static outside the ship um, that you can see. And the sh things kind of calm back down. You can just kind of hear the buzzing of the engines. And yeah, you're free to roam about the ship. Now, now let me tell you about the internals of the ship a little bit. And you can also kind of make up areas of the ship uh, if you think it would probably have them. Um, but for the most part, it has uh, a public cargo hold, um, quite large, where a lot of the people who are um, boarding the ship for transport also bring cargo. You know, you're allowed to rent a cargo space here. So there's a big open area, um, kind of big open cargo bay area with a big... Uh, like ship bay, you know, where ships can fly in or little transports can fly in and, and drop off cargo. Things are netted to the walls and the ground um, in this kind of big open room. And on one side of the room, uh, a small like private access hallway leads to a private cargo area where you can pay more money for a locked down, not visible to the public place to store cargo. Um, there's also a, a, a mess hall um, or like a cafeteria. They have cafeteria workers. There's food available for you to purchase, although it's garbage. Um, the coffee is, is this, mud. Is it sponsored by Meaty Court? And they do have uh, a Meaty Mike's vending machine uh, right. in one corner. So there are. it's just full of meat suppers and uh, Keller Super Drink, which is like the Coca-Cola of this universe. Um, but yeah, the actual food on the spaceship is like compressed beans from a can that are like barely heated up uh with like added protein preservatives and stuff so it's kind of a, a fully rounded meal and just like this bean slop that they throw on a tray for you um there's also a a few other common areas as you can imagine like a small lounge area they do have a small bar there it's mostly just beer and like you know mixed cocktails and plastic cups um and that kind of thing like a couple reading rooms maybe a little gym area um that kind of thing so you all take about eight days of space travel on this ship so far. Um, tell me what your characters are doing. Do you run into each other or notice each other or kind of uh, make friends at all? Um, and and uh, after you give a little background on this, I'll tell you about a few of the NPCs you maybe have also met on the ship. But feel free to make up other NPCs that you think you have thought of. This game, unlike D&D, is very much about you all uh, being able to say, I know a person here, this is their name, and then me working that kind of thing into the game. Um, so yeah, I'd like to know okay. if you all meet up with each other or chat at any point, or have any interesting goings on while you're exploring uh, the ship. You mentioned a reading room, uh, and I like to think that uh, Guy is kind of sitting there reading children's books to like a bunch of like, if there's like younger travelers, but then like Jupiter might also be there. <laughs> sitting around with like a, a bunch of 10 year olds that are like special needs class like i'm like oh yeah look the the funny butterfly or whatever and chupiner's like also looks like in it <laughs> i imagine there's not a ton of kids on the ship but there's like three or four and yeah they like take to you immediately because you're like this fun grandpa um yeah. And you're like, you kids want to read a storybook? And, and you read them uh, like the fuzzy, the fuzzy asteroid worm or, you know, whatever space kids book they have. Yeah. Jupiter, why are, are you there? Can you confirm this? <laughs> I might have walked by and, and stopped and stared for a few minutes. But, you know, just because I, I can't turn pages in a regular book without ripping it in half myself. I feel like I feel like you maybe try to sit down with like a newspaper um which is like you know at this point like 
it's actually a little electronic sheet of plastic that like displays text across it. And you like kind of try and hold it out on your knee and like peek over the top of the paper and pay attention to the storybook happening. And then maybe like ripped the newspaper in half on accident. And you're just like, God damn it. Like threw it down and left or so something of that nature. Yeah, I definitely broke a few of their uh, e-readers. <laughs> Beautiful. Um... I'm also wearing a dirty shirt because in the process of getting my bean dinner on three separate occasions, I tripped and fell and covered myself with beans. <laughs> oh man, the crew, like the, the the few custodians that are on the ship, like are all like, oh, it's the fucking bean guy. They call you the bean brute. It's actually become a nickname amongst the crew now for you. Oh, the bean brute. That's so good. Who else is doing what on this ship? Um, well, Hikari gets restless if he's not piloting something. So on the like five to eight days that we're in space, he's pretty much just at the gym practicing with his stun nunchucks. Nice. And uh, going around and asking people if they want to play chess or something or play some video games. Okay. So uh, I'd like to think that maybe you approach... Uh... You know, after a lot of people say no to chess, um, <laughs> you approach as, as you, they usually do. Yeah, you approach Guy or Guy because you're like, oh, this yeah. this is an old man. Like he's got to enjoy sitting in a park and playing and playing some you know space chess from time to time. Um, mm -hmm. And so yeah, Hikari comes up to you, Guy, and proposes a game of chess. What do you say to him? Oh yeah, so Guy absolutely is into this, uh, but he has never played a game of chess in his life. But he's just like, he's like, of course, you want to spend time with me? Like, he loves the idea that someone approached him and that, like, he just likes when people talk to him because he just feels kind of so alone with his family being gone. So he absolutely is, like, 100% into space chess, but he needs, like, the rules explained to him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hikari uh, will be uh, very, yeah, he'll, he'll teach you the in and outs. Uh, different strategies to use, the rules, all that sort of stuff. He he just likes like someone to play with because uh, yeah, not a lot of people enjoy the intricacies of of chess. Everybody's more of like a fast paced checkers kind of person. <laughs> he, he likes the grand strategy of it all. Uh, but yeah, but besides that, it's uh, card games, cards, and video games. All right. Much. Um. And Jupiter, what about you? Do you have any interesting altercations? What are you doing on the ship as uh, as you kind of pass these four or five days, five or, five or six days of travel? Well, I, you know, I was just thinking about it, and if Hikari's in the gym, you know, practicing with his nunchucks, I might actually stop in there and give him a few pointers because I am, oh, God. you know, I do come from like a heavily trained militaristic society. I the knowledge is there. It's just this giant bean covered, you know guy with a dull look on his face giving him giving the pointers to Hikari. Sure. So tell me this, what's your intelligence score? Not your modifier, but your actual score. I don't know why I can't find it on this new sheet. It's killing me. Um yeah it's kind of a weird sheet. So one thing I think with that sheet you can like expand a lot of sections. Yeah, so turn off this, there you go. Oop, turn off the, the cog at the top. And then you want to go, oop, nope, turn that off. <laughs> you no, it wasn't even me that time. Oh, okay. Uh, you can hit quick menu stat block at the top right, which will drop it into chat, which is nice. Um, but that doesn't actually have your strength. So let's see. Is it on, oh, it's on the ship tab right now. No, it's it's good. Oh, you were on the NPC tab. That's why I did. Here we go. Here's your full sheet. So I have a 12, I guess. So, yeah, you're pretty smart. You're fairly intelligent. So, um, yeah, so you come and start explaining this stuff to Hikari. And Hikari, I think, uh, I don't know. How do you respond to that at first when he comes up and starts giving you pointers? Um, I, I kind of take it in stride. I uh, He's always willing to learn from people. Um, and I'm like... I know that given his background, he does have like experience with everything, but uh, 
yeah, he's uh, he takes it in stride. Cool. I like, of, uh, I like to think at like very first glance, you're kind of maybe like, who's this fucking giant clumsy bastard? And then he gives yeah. you like a pointer and you try it like mid combo and you're like, hey, that actually worked. And you maybe yeah. maybe ask him like, how do you know that? And, he, and then he explains to you like, oh, like I'm actually, I'm leaving. Yeah. Uh, qu question. Yeah. Are there are there um, what's that room in X Men where it's like, or in Star Trek where it's all holograms? Do we have that? In the holodeck. Yeah. Do we have a holodeck? Not quite. Um, that's super expensive for this kind of transport ship to have. But there okay. is extremely um, extremely good virtual and augmented reality devices available beat saber hey Corey loves beat saber <laughs> loves it so yeah maybe you have like a small virtual reality mask that your compad can fit into um that allows you to play some some games on and that kind of thing or even do like pilot simulators in your spare time you know you can run that kind of thing um yeah cool um yeah, like uh he after like after um is it Guy? It's Guy. Guy, it? Guy, Guy is cool. Okay, Guy. Um, he goes. Do you want to uh, spar with me? I think Guy just kind of like chuckles and like looks at himself and then looks at Hikari, and then like. At oh this no, point, no, no! I'm sorry. I'm talking about Ju Jupiter. My bad. <laughs> oh. I'm so no, sorry. That, like, that, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just kicked this old man's ass. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, like, hey, well, what up? You want to fight? And I'm like, we just played checkers. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes into, like, this old boxing stance. See you here, young man. <laughs> um. So... Hold on, I'm trying to figure out this damn sheet as well. There we go. Can you guys hear me still? No. Can you guys hear me? I had to jump back in, I think. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, Sorry about that. Don't know what happened there. Um. So, yeah. Uh, let me see. Jupiter, I was noticing on your character sheet your weapons may not have come over. That may be the one thing that seems like it didn't. I don't know. I can't get it to like expand. It seems like it's fucking broken. Huh. Oh, yeah, there's just no weapons there. So yeah, you're going to want to fill out your weapons again. There, it's probably not super pertinent. Um... So yeah, that's a great introduction to how y'all got on the ship. Uh, and just to follow up, Hikari asked Jupiter to spar. Jupiter, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's give it a shot. All right. So yeah, you guys, uh, you make with the uh, sparring, and you kind of you know start to bond a little bit. And uh, he maybe teaches you a few things about how to be more steady and you teach it, you, you know, you teach him kind of some theory about how to do things a little better. And yeah, you guys start to kind of form a friendship maybe a little bit. Um, I like it. Yeah. Can we, can we roll to see who kicks, kicks each other's asses? Yeah, sure. Uh, you could just make an opposed exert check probably, or you know what, why don't you use one combat skill, punch or stab? Um, okay. Um, how do we get it to where we can select the skill again? So you have to click that little pen at the top oh, right okay. corner, the pencil. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I'm in edit mode. Okay. How do we get it? Um, you said punch or stab? Punch or stab skills, yeah. Okay. Well, it's the same score for everyone. Oh, let me. So, so like easy right now, or Jupiter right now, your sheet is on edit mode because I, I actually set it there. See all the text is blue and stuff? Um, yeah. If you hit the little pen, the pencil icon at the top right, it'll turn off edit mode and it'll make everything clickable. Hey, Kari got a three. And a cool thing too is you have those quick menus at the top right, so you can always hit like skills, Ooh. and then every that's all clickable in chat, which is nice as well. <laughs> 
So uh, Jupiter. Jupiter sucked the crap out of him. Yeah, so like I feel like Hikari's like dodge bobbing and weaving, dodging all over, and Jupiter misses a few times, and then like the third swing, Jupiter just like, boom, like one clumsy like straightforward jab happens to just catch you, you know, like his pinky knuckle right on right on your cheek, and it just drops you. <laughs> and I think maybe Jupiter didn't really mean to hit you so hard. He just meant to like spar you know tap you but uh fall- I will. yeah yeah that was the thing you know i'm just standing there like kind of letting you do your thing and i'm just kind of swinging my arms around every once in a while <laughs> you, know, you, you got some good blows and it just turns out i'm kind of a giant like wall yeah i guess that's why i should stick to piloting instead of fighting but, but thanks again man i'm gonna go ice my knuckles okay bye <laughs> And Hikari slinks away back to his cabin for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, tail between my legs, but, you know, it was a learning experience. All right, great. Um, So this is a good time to take our first little, like, three to five minute break. And as soon as we come back, I'll tell you a bit about a few of the groups of NPCs and other people that you have seen about the ship that may catch your interest. And then the last thing we're going to talk about for like before we really start pushing the story forward is we're going to set some goals for your characters. So the way that XP works in this game is a very cool goal-based system rather than like, oh, you killed five monsters, you level up. It's uh, I set, I'm going to set one mission for you from the get-go. You will get XP when you finish that mission. But also you can set up to two personal goals that we discuss and decide on as, um, as a dun- game master and player. And if you achieve one of those goals or reach one of them, you also get XP for that. So it's cool. You kind of choose what you get XP for, which I really like about this game. So Cool. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Um, talk about the other NPCs that are aboard the cargo ship Nightingale and also about what your character's personal goals might be. Fuck yeah. All right, we are back. Thank you for waiting, everyone. Um, so when we left off, we had just finished kind of introducing all of our characters, talking about their backstories, what led them to be aboard the cargo ship Nightingale on the way to um, planet Modesti, which is home to the Modesti outpost. Um, yeah, so you are all aboard the ship. You stopped at one planet where people got on and off this big cargo ship. Cargo was, you know loaded on with these big kind of space freighter, like grab freighter kind of shuttles. And you took off again, drove up into, made a spike drive into uh, Metaspace, and now you are uh, in metadimensional travel on your way to the next star system, which is Majesty. And it takes about a week, usually. Um, I think six days, actually. So you all are traveling about five five days, six days, and... um, before actually, you know what, before we go in, into this next part and I tell you about the NPCs that are, that are on the ship because I feel like you'll want to interact with some of them, let's talk about maybe your character's personal goals. So I have a goal in mind for you already that I'm going to give to each of you, but it would probably give away some of the storyline. Mm. that I have planned. So I'm not going to say what my goal for you is yet because you should all hit the goal if you don't die, basically. <laughs> um, uh, but you all need to set a goal for yourself, and it can be anything. And so one thing I want to say about Stars Without Number, if you all haven't read, I know some of you have read the book somewhat. I don't know to what extent, though. But one of the big like philosophical things it talks about with like the, f- the philosophy of this game is a little different than Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, in that we do want to build a great story, but I'm not going to write too much story to give to you. It's supposed to be super um, open world, very sandbox style gaming. So you all, and like I said, you all get to kind of make more details than you normally would in a D&D game, and I just will accept them as true for the most part, as long as they make sense. Um, and the cool thing about that is you steer where the, the action goes. Um, And it's very much about your character accomplishing their personal goals and completing personal arcs. So uh, in this system, yeah, you get XP based on your character's goals. So let's try and come up with a simple one that you will 
hopefully be able to achieve in three or four sessions for you know yourself. Um, and if you don't have an idea for one, or if you have a grander idea for a more long-term goal, then tell me what that is, and we'll try and break a small chunk of that off into a lesser goal for now. Um, I, I think mine's pretty straightforward. I think for me, I just want to find out if I'm a person or not. Okay, and I think that's good. But again, so that's more of like a, a grand scheme goal. So we'll break that up into smaller steps so you don't have to wait so long um, to gain XP. You know what I mean? Um, cool. So well, let's think of a tangible first step into finding out or investigating the trail of you being a robot or not. So um, Codacorp didn't help you. You got to have some clue. There's got to be a clue, something in a memory that you had a flash of, or a physical piece of something you found amongst your belongings. Anything that I, is leading you somewhere uh, towards planet Asta or Gitas. And I will say, planet Gitas, like I said, is home to Glyph Engineering and a bunch of other engineering companies that make like cloning technology, all other kinds of really crazy stuff. You said that's on Gitas. Gitas, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say that one of his memories was just straight up like a commercial for this company. Uh, okay, yeah, and I think that's a great idea. Um, you remember the Glyph Engineering logo like super clearly from this commercial. Yeah. That you, like, it's like a commercial of seeing a big like billboard on a building maybe. Um, yeah, and, it's and that's just like – that's almost in like the background of almost every memory. Okay is this little glyph, you start realizing this logo, this glyph engineering emblem. Yeah. So, cool, so you can write, uh, I'm gonna say, um, let's see, maybe just for the goal, it's reach the glyph engineering company, or, um, Yeah, I'm going to say, I don't know. Well, let's start with this. Roll roll a, a no check for me. I want to see how much you know about glyph engineering outside of your memories. Cool, and I apologize. I have no idea how to do that. So you just go into your character sheet. And so first of all, all those little sections of your sheet are yeah. collapsible, if you haven't noticed that. Cool. To get them out of the way if they're. Uh, um, so where is, oh, no, perfect. Skills. I, oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I have a minus one but then a two next to it so the two uh just means you roll 2d6 which is normal um a minus cool. a minus one is just normal untrained doesn't mean you're terrible just doesn't mean you're great good at it either you know cool so i roll 2d6 yep uh no actually so you just click on the word uh oh hold on you might be on edit mode yeah you are here we go now just click right on the word no okay my modifier is Minus one, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so you don't have to type. If it asks you for another modifier, you don't have to type anything in unless I tell you to. No. That's like a conditional. Um, so it subtracted an extra minus one. So you actually got a six. Um, cool. And usually a seven is baseline for success. Um, so a six is not terrible. You're close to succeeding. So I will say it's a logo you have seen um, a few times in your life around the, mm -hmm. the spaceports um but yeah. it's not a company you know a ton about i would right. i would think in fact if, if any time if any time you had seen um glyph engineering logos it was probably on cargo or like kind of just um nondescript objects like that like it wasn't like a spaceship model you could be like oh that's a glyph engineering ship or anything like that you know but you've seen the logo Perfect. Um, in not only your memories, but also your real life. So you know the company probably still exists somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and cool. I'm going to say that you, the cargo you saw it on, you knew was going on a, a ship headed for Gitas. So that's maybe your next goal. Cool. Works for me. So I'm gonna actually going to say, how about just reach planet Gitas uh, in search of knowledge about yourself? As soon as you touch down on Gitas, that's going to be your first goal met. Cool. That makes it nice and quantifiable. Um, wonderful. And that's spelled G-Y-D-I-S. All right. I will add that to my goals there. G, you said G-Y-D-Y-S? D-I-S. And uh, it is right. in the, I believe it's in the, let me check the system that it resides in. Gitas. 
in the shit I don't have it written here <laughs> hold on I don't have my sectors without numbers open which is like the number one thing I should have open let me open that up real quick Can you all still hear me? I guess the music. Yeah, you're good. Do you yeah. hear the, the game music or did it stop? I hear I'm... the World 20 music. Okay, I'm going to restart it because I can't hear it. Well, I turned mine down. I'm going to make sure that I... Yeah, it's still going. Cool. Yeah, you have the, you have the um, volume adjuster in your little settings too if you need to. That was one of the first things I had to find. Mm-hmm. Alright, so it's G Y D I S. Cool. Correct. Put that in my, uh, and, yeah, put that in there. And that's in the AFIL system, um, which you can cool. see, which wow. you can see if you look at the map right here. If you see my ping. Cool. Yeah, I see that. So you have to go. That's like the very last stop on uh, the Nightingale's route before it turns around and comes back. And it's something. It's something like a sixty-day trip, I believe, in total. Cool. I'm in it to win it. Um, who's next? Let's set a goal for someone else. A personal goal. I can go next. What do you got? What are you thinking? So, even though, um, you know, I, I, I got kind of paid to leave Kanos, mm -hmm. I still feel like I left disgraced. You know, it's completely against the society I was raised in. Yeah. What happened yeah. to me? You probably narrowly escaped with your life. You're lucky they even let you, you know, that yeah. you're lucky they landed on that rather than something worse. Yeah. Uh, you know, from a, from a meta standpoint, yeah, but I don't feel lucky. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm you sure know? you feel like shit about it. <laughs> so, so my, my goals, I either want to find something to kind of, to go back to Kanos with to really buy my way back in, you know, make myself finally useful. You know, make, I don't want to feel, I don't want, I feel like I wasted the my, my planet's resources, my society's resources, by just being alive, and I want to pay them back for that. Sure, yeah, you want to bring some sort of uh, some sort of usable um, military or valuable object they'll find valuable that they maybe wouldn't find on their own, possibly. Yeah, object or, or information or something. Okay, hmm. Let's see. How can we quantify that more? Um, like, let's give you a specific piece of lore or a rumor you heard for something you want to find, possibly. Um, so your goal could be similar to Hikari's, which is there are rumors that uh, like a, a new section of kind of abandoned Terran mandate bases was just uncovered on Asta. Um, or actually, you know what? Even better. I got a better one for you. I was thinking maybe he can like uh, he has he heard a rumor that uh, there are schematics to a, a military base that the planet wants to control, but it's very hard to take over. And the schematic has like weaknesses mm. in uh, in the base that I, can it can be exploited. I like that, and I'm gonna probably use that, but not for this. But okay. I I think that, that what I'm about to say might turn into that exact thing. We'll see though. So you heard on Asta, where is it? I'm trying to find the name. There is, um, well first, why don't you, same thing, make a no check for me. Let's see what you know. And there we go, a seven, so that's a success. Um, so you do know of a um, faction of sorts called the Preceptors. And the preceptors are known for their archives. The preceptor archive is what the actual organization is called. And preceptors are the men and, and women um, and people that you know man these archives. Um, it is an ancient pre-scream. Remember, the scream is this psychic event that kind of tore apart human space after we had kind of reached our pinnacle maybe four or 500 years ago. Um, so an ancient pre-scream library that's dedicated to universal knowledge of the stars and science. Um, and there were a few around, or maybe there's one on Kanto that's kind of small that you had heard of. Um, but you had heard a rumor, and you can decide how or where you heard the rumor, that a new preceptor archive was being built on Asta by kind of an um, amb ambitious preceptor. 
and he's kind of claimed a piece of land there and is trying to build this new library. So you're hoping maybe if you go there, you can uncover some ancient knowledge or at least some maps or something that will lead you to some some powerful technology or ancient knowledge, etc. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. So, yeah, yours will be Reach the Preceptor Archive on planet Asta, which is A-S-T-A. And if you're looking at the map in Roll20, Asta is in the meta system right here. Cool. Um, and so here's another thing. You, How many goal slots do you have on your character sheet? There is a maximum number you can have at a time. Um, honestly, for me, it felt like it was one. Oh, uh, no. It should be four, three or four, I think. Yeah, I'm just consistently clicking add. Okay, so you can keep, keep adding more. Yeah. Okay, Let, yeah. Let's put the limit at four, so you can have three personal quests plus one quest that I'll probably give you. Um, so keep that in mind as we play and new events unfold and you learn new things about your character and the, the universe, you can feel free to make up a new goal. You just let me know when you do so we can agree on the terms of the goal together and the amount of XP that you'll be getting for it. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That's no, okay. So keep that in mind as we go. Try and think of new goals and character motivations. Um, cool. Because that's how it helps me steer the game towards the stuff you all want to explore, you know? Um, all right, and that leaves us with uh, Hikari. We need to set a goal for Hikari. So yours might be um, what you were talking about. And it could also be linked to um, the Preceptor Archive, possibly. You could hear have he yeah. heard that maybe they have schematics from these old Terran mandate bases around the entire sector. And a lot of times they outline the defenses and things like that and where any kind of rel you know, reliquary, uh, reliquarium... I don't know. I don't know what the word. Any relic-like uh, technologies might reside inside those bases. Okay, so I have uh, two goals. One is uh, to find a relic or information leading to a relic. Okay. And the other is to simply win space battle. To win one to space battle to earn your wings. Win. Yeah, because um, yeah, you have to go through the harrowing aspects of battle in order to like be recognized as like a warrior and uh certain clans in ichiko city sure and well i mean yeah you're trying to be this hotshot pilot and you graduated flight school but you've never actually been in a battle you only done it on a computer you know so yeah it's time i like that it's a good goal so your other one is going to be find a relic um or information leading to a relic okay i was going to say maybe yours should also just be reach um if you had heard a specific rumor about the preceptor archive you could have the same goal which is reach the preceptor okay. archive do you um, want me to make a no check um yeah let's see if you know i mean you live in ichiko so i imagine you've probably heard of it just by way okay. of being an ichiko citizen um and a no sixes yeah i'm gonna say that's good enough that Wait, i can re-roll damn it <laughs> yeah uh, i'm gonna say with with, with a, uh, okay, yeah with a, it's a six anyway with a six i'm gonna give you a positive and a negative so yes you have heard this rumor um about this academy or excuse me this preceptor archive being built um on asta however you made an enemy in the process um whoever you got this piece of information from i don't know it was like over a card game or something and you were cheating or you did something kind of uh you did something kind of untrustworthy to get the information and the person found out and then they probably were part of like a gang i'll let you decide on that um, maybe i had to go in ichigo city there's a yakuza like underground okay that, uh you go to like it's like a shady like a smuggling den brothel type thing you gotta go in downtown i'm and, uh, fine with it just I, being the straight up yakuza i feel like they're one of the few uh families that could definitely survive all this space mess so um, yeah yeah, so there's like a Neo Yakuza clan there, and yeah, maybe that's where you got the information from. But you double ended up double crossing them or pissing them off, and uh, basically that might be the reason you're kind of leaving the planet as well. We we were probably playing a card game or a chess game, and uh, I cheated the information. Like I I was wait I was waging money or services, I guess, and uh, he was waging information. Ah. And I, uh, 
I cheated to get it, I guess. And he found out. Uh, maybe one of their bots on the way out the door scanned your cred stick through your pocket and realized you didn't have the money you were betting with. Mm. I kind of like that. And they beat the shit out of you and threw, the, threw you in the alley and said, if you don't get off planet, we're going to kill you. Sounds good to me. I like that. I'm into that. That's cool. Me too. I like that a lot. All right, great. So we have some goals set. Keep in mind, like... Ruben, your, um, or Guy, rather, your goal is a further planet away than everyone else's, so obviously it would take That's long, fine. longer to achieve, but like I said, just come up with a new one that is more closely achievable, yeah. you know, on the way. I mean, as, yeah, as things go on and as the story progresses, I bet I can find other things and I can find, like... Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? You'll have more immediate stuff come up, so... Like, I definitely can already see how I'm kind of gonna, like take both of them under my wing so I, I can definitely see a goal arising from that all right great okay well let's jump back into the story then and uh so yeah you are aboard the nightingale flying from um from Eumedes to Modesti uh on the six day journey through metaspace um the ship has kind of settled into its metaspace uh drill course um and the turbulence has died down and you all you know have been lounging and just trying to pass the time maybe get to know a few of the other people now the other people you've noticed on the ship there's a few that are there together there's a small group um of lazarites neo lazarites which you all recognize from their garb they wear this kind of dirty old world robes you know they look like a, m a monk of yesteryear and kind of plain all, like dirty harry krishna Yes, yeah, but even, like, Harry cool. Christ Christians are generally fairly clean. These are, like, like they're wearing dusty old brown robes. They seem a little unwashed. Um, one of them, like, the main guy has, like, a shaved head, and then it's, like, three women with him. Um, and you kind of Ooh. notice that a lot of the Neo-Lazarites always have, like, shaved heads a lot of times. Um, and then he's just got tattoos, like, swirls um, that, like, turn, cool. that turn into a crucifix up the back of his head. Um, cool. And so you've noticed so that, like, a, like an edgy avatar. Yeah. Um, and you've kind of noticed them dwelling around the ship. Now, I will say that. Um, I, well, let's see. You all can roll a group no check real fast here. Everyone, make another no check for me. To see. No check, you said. Yep. All right, I gotta pull mine back up. So one thing you can do um, on your character sheet. There's the quick menus at the top right. If you hit. Wait, is this a new scene? Yes, technically. Um, yeah. You can do it your reroll again. <laughs> it's two ones. What's going on? <laughs> oh my god. So that's all right. More than half the group made it, so you all know it. That's how the group check works. It's like if, you know, if le less than half of you succeed, you fail. Um, so you have heard rumor and seen probably symptoms and side effects of this kind of splintering among the gathering of Lazarus. So there's the gathering of Lazarus is is kind of the Christianity of space, um, or the Holy Church of Lazarus rather. The gathering is this new splinter that's splintered off of the Church of Lazarus, and those are called Neo Lazarites um, since they are the newer kind of version. The, these Protestant Lazarites, um, and they are kind of known for being a little bit heretical. Um, so. The Church of Lazarus believes that there's a planet somewhere called Heaven, and that's where Jesus came from. The, right. the Neo-Lazarites think that they must go on a, a lifelong pilgrimage to reach it. Otherwise, they die and go to hell. Um, and so, if they do get to a point where they are going to die, they generally would rather become zombified, because it, they think that prevents them from going to hell. Um, okay. So they worship zombies in some kind of strange sense. They don't like want to hang out with zombies, but they do think zombies have like reached a place of purgatory that's at least a step above hell. Um, if, All right. If that makes sense. They have some very deep and strange beliefs, um, but most of them, when you see them, are traveling in small bands, just like this group of four or five people you see here. Um, and you imagine they're probably heading deeper into the sector because you are on the outer rim here, looking for heaven. Um, 
I just, just really quick, Guy is a little confused, like, how come the gathering don't have face paint on? And then, like, somebody quickly explains to him that it's a different gathering. <laughs> <laughs> They're not, like, cracking open Fagos and, like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. ICP has relics. Yeah. I mean, ICP seems extremely uh, normal compared to these people. Yeah. Wow. I'm into it. I mean, in space, everyone talks like ICP raps anyway. Like, oh, in the no. future, it's like idiocracy. Everyone talks about their balls and, like, <laughs> fat chicks named Brittany or, like, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's an ICP lyric. Something about a, a fat chick named... Oh, a fat chick named Bridget, I think, is what it is, the lyric. They're awful. Anyway, uh, no, it's not that gathering. So yeah, you see these people dwelling about the ship. Mostly on the ship, they um, stick to themselves. They don't talk to others much. The the main guy with the bald head, like, he's got these bulging eyes, and he just kind of like you make eye contact with him multiple times, and he's always just kind of fucking looking around, real conspicuous. Like, they spend most of their time in the reading room, uh, kind of segmented off to one side in like a little prayer circle. When you say bulging, do you, you mean just like human bulging, right? Yeah, or, yeah. The, or is it like they're not like augmented or anything? Uh, you aren't sure. You could roll a um, – I don't remember what all the skills are. Is there like a perception type skill? Oh, there's a notice. Notice. You could roll a notice check. Or, cool. uh, or a, you could roll a fixed check, but it would be harder. I'll do a notice just to see. Okay. I, I imagine him looking like that uh, – the character – from uh, Roger. Uh, uh, with the uh, eyes. Oh yeah, Roger, the Roger Rabbit. I was gonna say like Christopher Lloyd from Roger Rabbit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh, yeah, man. Uh, I got a nine, by the way, Charlie. So you notice um, that these do seem to be some sort of implanted eyeball. Okay, cool. But it gives him. It, it's not real noticeable. It just gives him kind of a bug-eyed look. You know, like he never yeah. blinks or something. Well, and that was just my my question is would an average person notice this and it looks like no probably not. but i noticed it mm -hmm. okay cool but i noticed it they, they as soon as you noticed the face paint wasn't there then you became intrigued by what these folks were doing and <laughs> yeah. you started peering closer at him kind of in the reading room uh you know and you noticed at one point like one of his eyes like twisted and adjusted like a lens and then like <laughs> opened back up and you wondered if he maybe just took a picture or something um He's just zooming in on story time. Yeah, maybe that was he was like, "Oh, the rabbit uh, says," <laughs> and like, zzz, like zooms in on the book. Um, yeah, great. Uh, and so, also um, among the ship, you have noticed uh, these, the small group. I think. Let me see how many. If I've written down here, how many there are. You have noticed a small group of what seem like mercenaries um, from two things. Uh, they have laser weapons, some of them not just pistols either. Seeing a pistol on someone's belt is pretty common out in this kind of outer reach space. Um, but some of these guys have like more, you know, assault rifle style laser weapons on their backs. Uh, they all have like kind of these mohawk haircuts. Um, real tough looking kinds of sons of bitches, men and women, um, also lightly armored. Um, and usually on a lot of planets, armor is illegal and even on a lot of transports. So you wonder if they didn't pay extra for the ability to remain armed, um, on board because no one else is, it, it's rare to see. If you see someone walk around and walking around in armor, you kind of assume they're looking for trouble normally. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I will say uh, you have noticed them hanging around the cargo dock. Uh, two or three of them will patrol to the cargo area about every hour. Um, but you haven't investigated further to see what they're doing in there. But you see them heading down the long hallway that leads to the cargo area. Two or three of them will pass by you with their guns, kind of chatting amongst themselves every once in a while. Um, one of them seems to be a leader type out of like the five or six of them that are on the ship. Um, and they're also accompanied by a man in a suit, a very nice suit and a briefcase. Seems like a business person of some sort. All right. 
Okay. And uh, the the business suit guy and the mercenaries are together. At like first, interact with each other. At first, you weren't sure. You thought maybe you just caught them in a random interaction in the mess hall. But then later, you saw they were in one of the conference rooms together. As you like walked past the window down the hallway, like back to your quarters, mm -hmm. you noticed okay. that the man in the suit kind of like looking up at you from like a closed door conference room, you know, kind of little chamber off to the side. And then as you walked past, you noticed four or five of these mercenary guys, one of them being this leader or possibly lieutenant, you know, someone higher, this higher ranking member of this mercenary group in there as well with them. Um, well, uh, Hikari's going to go ask the captain for permission to attend the bridge. So uh... you head towards the bridge section of the ship and they actually have uh, an employee stationed outside of the bridge, a security officer. Um, as you approach, he's kind of standing there at attention, you know, like right in front of this door that would open up to the, the bridge. And he says, um, hello. Passenger area is back that way. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I was just wondering if, uh, the captain, uh, wondering if, uh, might be able to, uh, check out the bridge. Uh, you know, I'm a pilot, so kind of want to know, like, the, the different systems that each ship has, and was wondering. He's like, he's like, uh, you're a pilot, huh? He's like, w where'd you go? Uh, I graduated uh, Ichiko Aerospace Academy with the class. He's like, oh, huh. I went to Ichiko Aerospace 20-something years ago. A lot of good it did me. He's like, anyway, uh, authorized personnel only. Sorry about that. Captain's orders. Mm. Maybe, uh... You know what? It's okay. Uh... Yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll go head back. He's to like, the, uh... he's like, sorry, maybe I'll see you in the mess as you kind of like walk away. Yeah, I just wave at, I just wave at him as I keep walking, anime style. <laughs> Hand, hands like this, walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the head down over the back. Yeah. Over the shoulder wave. Um, so other people you've seen on the ship that have been kind of caught your eye. Multiple merchants, um, a couple families who seem like they might be moving. Um, cool. Boarded on Eumedes. Um, partly you think prop might be leaving from Diametra, which was recently taken over by the Legion. When Diametra was seized by the Legion of Kanos, most of the, the Church of Lazarus people and the Neo-Lazarites living there fled to Eumedes, because Eumedes is a very rich place and they actually had some unoccupied bubbles um, in their city that they were willing to spare uh, for refugees. And so also some normal families kind of seem to be dipping out from Eumedes as well with all their belongings packed up on this cargo ship. Um, but more wealthy cool. families. It's, it costs quite a bit to move a whole family through space. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's really about it. A couple others, um, you know, that don't really particularly catch your eye. Um, let me see here. You see uh, the last, I guess, two people that really do catch your eye are two other businessmen who also have been meeting, having conferences, and also video conferences in one of the small conference rooms along the hallway to the, the living quarters. Um, you recognize their outfits um, as being uh, uniforms for the New Exchange Consulate which is kind of the interstellar banking corporation of this sector and also the next sector over. They're pretty huge. They are a reboot. So before the scream, it was the exchange consulate run by the Terran mandate that fell apart. This corporation banked on the um, recognizability of that name and named themselves the new exchange consulate after the, after the Terran mandate had completely kind of fallen out of this region. So they've been around like for 300 years or so now, the new exchange and they are, yeah, basically just an interstellar bank, but they are a private corporation. Um, so they don't have to adhere to a lot of laws. You find them on a lot of other planets. Um, they, uh, Kanos being a notable exception from the bank's network in the sector. Kanos has its own currency, not involved with this bank at all. Oh, wow. That's surprising that banks aren't involved in wartime states. Uh, well, that's a lot of people speculate if 
um, they aren't interested in making money off of this by some other means. Mm. Okay. Um, so I think at this time, uh, Guy kind of notices uh, the whole situation with Hikari and the uh, the guard at the bridge, and he kind of like leans, he kind of like looks at Hikari, and he's like, "They won't let you out there." No, he said uh, ship personnel only, no passengers allowed. But you know, this could be expected. So, guys, like, no, 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 F- follow me. I got this. So I think, and then they kind of like walk back over. And guys, like, guy kind of walks up to the security guard and he calls him by name. He's like, "Greg, like, how you doing? Like, how are the kids?" And he gets he gets very like personal immediately. Okay. Not like attacking, but just like, "How how is your mom? I know she was like sick. Like, he, sure. he's very." And I feel like, yeah, so he's just very like, first name basis. Everything is cool with this guy, and he's like, "Hey." my buddy just wants to do a quick, he, he's, you know, really wants to be a pilot, really, you know, he, well, he's a pilot, but he really wants to just see how these big ships work. Just a quick little, just a quick little lap should be okay, right? Make a connect uh, charisma check. So, so, so click connect and then it, it'll ask you for, or there's like a little drop down for a skill. Okay. Could I um, assist him by uh, stating that, you know, uh, we're old school. We're uh, alumni, you know. We're bros. I just want to see if I can give him a, a plus one or something. Um. Yeah, I'll let you roll for that. I guess. Cool. So I did the uh, connect charisma. And I'm gonna roll now. Okay, and we'll see. Depending on if uh, Hikari makes a successful check, it actually adds a plus one to your check too, even though you already okay. succeeded. Uh. Cool. So you want to connect with charisma? Yep. Yeah, so it didn't add anything, but that's okay because he succeeded anyway. The guard kind of like, okay. he's like very familiar with guy. Guy comes up, says you know, calls him by name, shakes, slaps hands, like they they chat for a minute. It's very friendly, um, and then you kind of like try and chime in, like ha, 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 I'm part of this, and he just like turns and looks at you, like what the fuck? <laughs> and the guy's like, I got this, buddy. I got this. Like, you get the message pretty quick, Akari. But uh, the guard is kind of like. Only for you guys, like, uh, yeah, he's like, you can go. He's like, say hi to Sharice for me when you go in there. And he like, thank you, thank you. He like steps aside from the door and like punches in a code and it's like, like opens up into like this big open kind of two part room. It's like a lower part. You actually have to climb up a, a little staircase up into an upper stage in the back of the room where, you know, this is a big bridge. It's huge. It's maybe like 200 feet across and 100 feet ahead. Big port window, screens hanging down and kind of nodules and and little stations um and consoles just lining the walls there's probably 20 people at desks lining different equipment in here and you know people are bustling by you kind of on the gangplank as you walk uh through the center of the bridge here um i mostly want to kind of uh walk around look like i'm taking in like uh the ship's functions and like what what everybody's job is Okay. A couple questions here and there about what they're doing. But uh, mainly I want to try and get to a ship's log. You want to try and get to a log? Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. Well, so you um, you do notice multiple open um, consoles along the wall. However, you also notice everyone working in here is wearing a um, Cervantes Corporation uniform. Hmm. So, you know, you could walk over to one and start typing away right now, but you wonder if someone wouldn't stop you based on your garb alone, you know? Um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go up and start, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go in and start typing, see if I can, uh, my goal is to find a, uh, personnel, uh, list Mm -hmm. of, uh, not only ship personnel, but of, uh, the passengers as well. Like okay. Names and, uh, yeah, you want like you want like a, a manifest, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so you walk over to an open console right kind of near the door that you all came in from, you know. Okay. And I, like, I, I tell, I whisper to guy, um, try, try and uh, try and block me from view a little bit. Make, make it so that we look inconspicuous. 
guy just kind of like waddles over and is like whistling and like <laughs> but but be but be prepared to make a distraction if we need to so guy you could make a perform charisma check if you wanted or perform yeah perform charisma to try Let's and bl blend in and Hikari, you can make a sneak uh, dexterity or sneak intelligence check for me. So God gives you a plus one to your check. Cool. I got to perform charisma as a seven. Yeah, so that's a success. So because it's success, you're going to aid uh, Hikari in his sneak check by giving him a plus one. Did you put the plus one in the roll already? Um, No, I didn't. Uh, it looks like you did. Oh no, plus your dexterity, plus your dexterity. So sometimes it'll ask you for a modifier when you make a skill roll. That's like if, you know, someone aids you, you can just type in one. But you actually got a okay. 10, so you really succeeded. Yeah. Um, so you nice. sneak into this terminal, um, and it seems like just as you do, like you're going to a, a console that's like right next to someone else at a terminal who's already also working. So like, you're like, you know, they have their like next door neighbor at work. They know that person's name. They know you're not them. But like as soon as Guy walks over and just like kind of stands there and starts whistling, this person turns around and he's like, Guy! How you doing, man? And, and yeah, Guy just instantly, the same exact thing he did with the, the guard at the door, like, how's your kids? How's your family? Like, and Hikari, how's your kids? You just like yeah. crouch and like right, right up behind him. Like you're literally a foot, like two feet away from this guy chatting with Guy. And he has no idea that you're like typing around this computer. But so you open up the terminal and it is password protected. Okay. Um, is it possible? Is the guy uh, who's ta who's talking to guy still at his console? He is right next to you, still in his chair, like looking up at guy, being like, "Whoa, well, yeah, like you know, how's Modesty been treating you?" And all this oh, kind of man. stuff. Um. Uh. Okay. I turned. I turned to guy and I say, "Um, hey guy. Uh, do you and your old friend look like you should be." You should need to catch up. Uh, how about you guys go get a coffee, and uh, I'll I'll meet you back at uh meet you back at the reading room for a chess game. Yeah, and guy kind of like winks at Hikari, and he's like, "Yeah, I got you." <laughs> and he like is like, "Yeah, man, let's let's go get a coffee." And he kind of like motions to the other guy. All right. Um, I think Hikari, I'm gonna make you do a check for that, possibly. Okay. Mm. My, my my intention is for the guy to get up uh and being so caught up in the moment of being with this friendly old man that he forgets to log out and i can go to his console and use his uh his not his password but his uh his instance. his login all right yeah. well, i think since guy already succeeded on the perform check uh guy when you you know you kind of go along with akari's idea and suggest like yeah like Let's go grab a coffee. Like, let's go grab a coffee real quick, Nick, or whatever his name is. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He gets up with you and walks away. No problem. Now, what I'm gonna have you do, Akari, is make a luck check, a luck save, to Ooh. see if he leaves his computer unlocked. So if you don't have a luck save on your sheet, you have to go to the cog I do. and click add luck save. There we go. Wait. Can I reroll? New scene. It is still the same scene. Okay. So. He does not, he like hits the escape key and his terminal logs out as he st like gets up and walks away. Okay, okay. But um, you can always try and um, you could try a program check to try, I don't know. Do you have a, mm, without I'm a, not proficient in, in programming yeah, or that, hacking or anything. So then I'm going to say I, no. I think you, I'll, yeah, I'll just, you, uh, I'll just follow them out the door and uh, them. All right. Then. But, um, bef like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So you stand up from the terminal and head back out of the bridge, uh, back into the common areas of the ship, right? Yeah. All right. It was worth a shot. Um, now, uh, you've also noticed there are some terminals that are authorized personnel only that you could reach in the common areas. Like, if you mm. waited around one long enough, you could probably find a point where no one was watching and try and access one of those. You've noticed... Um, actually, why don't you make a notice check for me real fast? We'll see what you've noticed. Notice wisdom. Or notice intelligence, your choice. Eight. 
Yeah, so you've noticed uh, ship employees um, like have a name tag chip on their shirt, um, mm -hmm. and they, they slot this chip in the computer, and it logs them in. Um, that's what you've okay. noticed in the common areas. You assume probably the computers in the in the bridge work the same as well. Yeah, um, I want to after after we finish our coffee, I want to get um, Jupiter and Guy together, and we're gonna go to the uh, gym and see if anybody's in there. Okay, so um, you could, like come back to this common area, Jupiter. Where do they find you? What are, what are you doing in the ship? So while all that was happening, yeah, I've been in the mess hall. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> trying to get another trying to get another tray of bean slop well I, I my my shirt is completely soaked through with beans so I'm trying to use the meaty mic spinning machine okay and uh, I feel like I broke it like I cannot get it to work it's just yeah it, it's not working for me so you come in and you see uh <laughs> You see Jupiter just like standing kind of bored or like apathetically in front of the meaty mics machine, just like poking the buttons like over and over again, super hard. And then like, just like standing there looking inside of the glass for a minute, like, uh, <laughs> and then poking the buttons some more. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like I to think the buttons are broken. Like yeah. they're cracked. They're just like crushed into the machine and you're still pressing on them. Can I just like, uh, kind of callously over his shoulder, start pressing buttons to see if I can fix it. Or if it's just like, he doesn't know what he's doing or whatever. I mean, he knows, I think he knows what he's supposed to do. It's not a matter of intelligence as it is a matter of just sheer clumsiness. Um, okay. But so, I, 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 so yeah. I'm you, imagining, sorry. No, you, you go ahead. I, I'm just imagining him as like a, uh, he has like an aura of chaotic energy around him where everything that, uh, that whatever will, ha will, Whatever bad happens will happen around him. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, the math the math around the universe is skewed to chaotic around him. So <laughs> I was just wondering if it's like is the machine messing up because of that, or he's just you know well, yeah. Pretty... I think you reach around and uh, punch a few buttons in the machine, and like uh, a meat supper is like eh, like drops down into the slot immediately. You know, it's just that he you have normal sized human fingers, which this machine mm. which this machine was oh. designed for. Okay, so he has like sausage hands. That's how I imagine. I don't know. Do you have sausage hands, Jupiter? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like everything about me is just kind of exaggeratedly like plump, awkwardly or... shaped. Okay, <laughs> you're just made of different shapes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I am a rectangle with like an egg on top. <laughs> it's uh... like when you make a character creator and you just use the slides at every <laughs> yeah every <laughs> direction. Of... Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I tell him, hey, get your food and follow us. Uh, I have something I want to talk to you guys about. All right. Like um, who else is in the mess hall with us, Charlie? Um, you tell me. Well, I mean, is there any like the mercenary people there? Uh, one or two of them, sure. Yeah. Not. It's a pretty big cafeteria, you know. So they're like sitting on the other side uh, on a table near the wall. Just two of them. Okay. All right. I was just curious who I'm going to accidentally fall onto with my food. Oh, good <laughs> lord. <laughs> I um, I also like to think, too, that like for most of the parts of the ship where a uh, guy walks in, like all the workers kind of wave, like, like hey, guy. Yeah. yeah, like, hey, guy. Like, he's almost like a, like a sad norm from Cheers. <laughs> like, it's like everyone knows him and he's very happy to be there, but it's like they all know that, like, his life is kind of... Yeah, he's the, he's the, he's the, watched. So Norm is sad. Yeah, I was like, you're, I was like, just like Norm, you know, people like you and they they are your friend, but you're there for a sad reason, like, yeah. <laughs> which is Norm was an alcoholic. Your reason is you you don't know if you're a human or not. Oh <laughs> is Guy that old man from Up? A little bit. We we discussed that. He's like he's like a nice version of that old man from Up. <laughs> God, he's gonna, so tie, a, gonna tie a bunch of spaceships to his house and fly away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he was a gas station attendant. He's probably just like scabbing rocket boosters like every day. Um, hey, oh, I'm not gonna say I didn't think about it when we mentioned that I can control drones. Yeah, dude. 
Just have drones oh, carry, like, carry your house away. He's like if Dante got old. From uh, Clerks. Yeah, I love it. Pretty much. Okay, so, um, yeah, so do you all follow Hikari, then, as he comes and beckons you? Yeah, I, uh, I give him, like, a quick, like, I'll be right back. And I'm assuming there's, like, a concierge, right? Like, because if there's, like, rooms and stuff. There are a few customer service employees, yeah. Uh, one of them um, is probably the transportation liaison is their title. And they probably do have, like, a little help desk area that she sits at. That's, like, her office. Cool. So I, I imagine that I kind of walk up to her and I'm like, hey, like, and she's like, oh, hey, guy. And I, I kind of start to explain that, like, I, I make up some like my knees starting to give out. And I know that those special rooms are reserved for like the VIP, but they're a little bit closer to everything. And it's a little bit easier for me to stay in those kind of rooms than it would be like the regular rooms because they're maybe up like higher stairs or something. OK, roll like, I think I think. Yeah. Real talk check or because you already kind of like know a lot of the people here, you could do a connect charisma or a talk charisma. Man, it don't mean charisma fuck. Yeah, no, my charisma's off the chart. Um you said a talk charisma or a what or a connect charisma in your your call. I'll roll a uh I'll do a talk charisma. Okay. So yeah, like you really play up the hurt knee to her. Yeah. Um, and, and she's like, oh, guy, you poor thing. Your knees hurt? She's like, are you okay? I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll make it. I just, I just need a little bit of a closer room. She's like, I'll, I'll tell you what, guy. She's like, we really only have two of those suites full. I mean, the captain always takes one, but that, um, fella in the suit, he's here with, uh, uh, with those kind of rough looking guys he has one of those rooms too but the rest are open so yeah i don't see why not um you just have to you have to be out of the room by the time we get to modesty is that okay totally fine she's like here and she like slides a key card across the desk to you and he like he like winks at her like he's got that kind of old man charm she's like mm -hmm. she's like oh guy i hope your knee feels yeah. better she's like you just let me know if there's anything else i can do for you she's like i'll have some of those sugar-free ice cream sandwiches sent up to your room tonight like the ones you like oh he's like God. oh thank you so much and, and, and she's like and the prune juice as you walk away and i'm like i do like kind of like a fist bump like yeah and i like i'm definitely like starting to like favor the knee so, so it looks like i'm hobbling a bit got a little limp going yeah Oh, and then man. I like meet meet these guys back at the gym, and I'm like, I have a more uh, private place if we want one. And I kind of just hold up the key. Oh, oh, that's perfect, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. All right, and I escort these guys to the uh, to the like VIP suite that I just you know, old man conned my way into. That's the yeah. best part about being old, an old person. No one assumes you're doing anything bad ever. Um, this is yeah. great. So yeah. you go to a small lift, like elevator lift that you know um, leads to the upper section of the ship, which is author authorized personnel only, and also the private quarters. And you slot the uh, you know this little key card in the elevator once you're inside, and the lift goes up a few levels, like real quick, it's like, and you're there, and the doors slide open, and it's just a small hallway in front of you with um, eight doors, you know, four on each side, and then one at the very end of the hallway that you assume is the captain's quarters. You have room 101. It's like the first one on your right. Um, Perfect. But, but as the elevator doors like, poof, open up, you see the businessman and also the mercenary leader standing there together, just like face to face with you. And I just kind of like politely. Wait, say that again. Does Jupiter still have the beans? I mean, he's, his shirt is covered, yeah. No, but no, I mean, like he the, had the, the meat meal. He I, had I, like I a tray. Like... He had like a tray of food. You tell us, Jupiter. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Oh, God. <laughs> no, this is great. So, so I'm like, oh, excuse me. And I kind of like go in between them, but they're like not really moving, but I'm like kind of squeezing my way in. Uh, so the leader, this mercenary leader fella, um, in this kind of rusty, you know, red-looking 
space armor, um, like pulled over his normal clothes, like pushes right past you, like gives you the hard shoulder. And he's like, watch it, mate. And he like pushes into the elevator. And this little kind of skinny, frail businessman in the suit just kind of like bows to you a couple times like, oh, so sorry. So sorry, excuse us. And he steps back into the elevator. You better watch where you're going, Bob. That's my dad you walked into. Um, the, the mercenary leader is like, that's your fucking dad. Yes, he's a war hero. He's like, are, he's like, are you all even supposed to be up here? He's like, I thought we were just like, yeah. I thought we were the only ones with a private suite. The guy kind of flashes the card. Yeah, he's like, look, like he doesn't say anything, but he kind of like flashes it and like points, like, look what I got. Yeah, see, people know how to respect their elders around here, and that's why we got the room. Um, he's like, he turns to the guy next to him, and he's like, um. Dozier will be hearing about this. He's like, we were supposed to be alone. And he's like, fuck off. And he like clicks the elevator button and the door is just like shh, slide shut and they're gone. Fucking cunt. Anyway, let's head to the room, guys. So you go into the room. Um, it's a very nice suite, like hotel style suite, huge king size bed, like three rooms in here. Um, a nice spread out on the table, like a gift basket with soaps and perfumes, little snacks and foods. There's a stocked mini fridge in one side. It's very cutting edge, very well decorated. Um, you understand why people pay a lot of extra money for this room when you see it. Um, and there's like, of course, like a nice sitting area with multiple kind of couches and sofas and um, like built in, you know, pads or like kind of little little telecom screens into each of the arms of the sofas. You said there's like nice food on the table. Mm hmm. Much. Guy kind of. Guy, guy points to it and he's like, take what you guys want. Like, I can't eat most of it anyway. Hikari goes and gets whatever looks like beef jerky and starts eating it. All right. Uh, but yeah, um, called you guys in here today because I wanted to. Well, you see, I'm really bored not being able to fly anything right now and uh i've noticed that those fucking mercenaries who i hate now by the way uh they're always up on that private cargo hold, and it looks like they're doing something really shady so that's why i asked you for us to go that well that's why i wanted to go into the the bridge earlier i wanted a ship's log see if i can find any information about that um but yeah I, I just I just wanted to see if those because they look pretty powerful. I mean, the banker himself. I don't know if he paid the mercenary himself or they're just they're escorting something. But I have a strong suspicion it might be relic or information leading to a relic. That's why I was curious. So, um, my plan is I want to kind of have more information about it, find out more about it, get a uh, get a hold of some. Uh, ships, ship IDs. Real quick, before anyone responds to him, uh, I just want to be clear, the bankers from the New Exchange Consulate, those two businessmen are separate from the businessman with the with the mercenary group. The businessman with the mercen mercenary group, you're not sure what his company or business is. He's just dressed okay. as if he were, you know, a okay, middle... But, but, um, but he's... What's that? Uh, I'm just uh, saying that it, he's been uh, the one in and out of the private he the, hold. He was the one that uh, that bowed. Yeah, when you passed by him. And, okay. you, and you saw him in a conference room talking with these mercenaries. Um, but yeah, then the other two bankers are separate. But And the people you've been seeing go in the private hold, you are correct. We're just the mercenaries going in there and checking on it with their guns and stuff. So. Um, okay. Yep, yep. Anyway, so yeah, he lays this plan out to you. What do you all say to him? I kind of, I kind of motion to to Jupiter. I'm like, go for it. Like, what do, what do you think? Oh, uh, sounds like a fun plan. <laughs> I mean, we could, we could hit a few of the guards, maybe steal their badges. I kind of yeah. like put my hands up. I'm like, whoa, we don't have to hit anybody. These are nice people who are very polite. <laughs> Like we, 
you saw what I can do here. I can probably get you guys some badges, like... You see, and... like... Go ahead. Well, and guys, like, I don't... I don't want to get involved in anything violent, but... I'm not against you guys getting involved in anything violent. Um, well, my plan, it doesn't necessarily call for violence. I'm, I'm kind of playing to each of our strengths here. Um, I would like Juniper to create a distraction, anything, food on people or whatever. And I would like Guy to come and be like the helping hand. And then in the chaos, maybe we can like um, swipe some IDs that way. And Guy kind of laughs. He's like, we're going to Ocean's 63 this bitch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to Ocean 63 with only three of us. Perfect. Is uh, is it everybody fine with that? Yeah, guy, guy's into it. He 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 like, he's starting to realize he kind of likes the thrill. Like, mm, yeah. He, like, when he he's helped the bridge, he was like, yeah, he was like the that bridge thing was fun. Like, I we stuck in there, and it's like even though it wasn't really a big deal, he was just like excited about it. And, yeah. You know, he's like when we push back past those guards and. Yeah, so he he he's into it. His yeah. his blood's starting to get excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Car, he's like, you did a you did a fantastic job. I can really tell that you're a people person, and that's that's really going to help us. The and Juniper's skills at being destructive and a, a force to be reckoned with will also be quite helpful. What's that supposed to mean? I'm just saying <laughs> it's, it's 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 serendipitous that we have this 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 group that can you know accomplish some things without being overtly you know espionage like you know we're all just you know some some dumb fucks trying to you know get our goals straight get our life together we don't come off as being like spies or like anyone worthy which is a strength in and of itself and at this point, too, Guy's kind of gotten up, and he's, like, he's getting, like, three plates of food. Like, if there's, like, a tray, and he's getting three plates of food, and he's kind of, like, getting it, like, he's, like, yeah, you're probably like this, and he's, he starts to pass them out to everybody. He's, like, cooking scrambled eggs and breakfast <laughs> for dinner. He, like, he, fi he fires up an omelet station that they have, like, on hand, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, flipping omelets. Um so guy comes back with a plate full of crepes and and berries and uh, <laughs> like you know crack like a, a cracker and meat spread and a few other things yeah. um, and kind of like starts handing out some food to all of you and, and you're discussing the plan and it's just then as you're discussing the plan that the entire ship all the food in guy's hand and any food you just set on the table the entire ship is rocked as if hit by something just like and like shakes and you hear a loud crash and all of the lights just like <laughs> like the whole room just goes entirely black you hear the clattering of these you know plates of food and stuff across the floor and these platters and then like like emergency lights come on and like strips across the floor just very dim lights from the ceiling that barely illuminate the room and then you hear like a out of nowhere start happening just like echoing through the ship there's just this alarm sounding you see you can, you can see kind of like red lights flashing in the hallway um and yeah there's like a lit path lining the floor towards the the exit door to your room what, guy's uh, excited that he's not dead guy was afraid <laughs> that he was dead for a second and he kind of like looks around and he's like okay we're good hmm. Uh, I was wondering if it's possible would I know if we the ship uh, got out of subspace? You can see, I'm going to say probably the private chambers do have windows. You can see it seems like you um, have spiked down. Or actually, let me see. Let me read real quick. So you're getting really close to Modesti. You're like a day or two away. Um, you are no longer in metaspace. You look out the window and you can see the stars are now slowly drifting rather than streaking by. Oh man, must have been a critical engine failure. You must have hit something. But we should we should go uh where the others are. And he starts heading out uh the door. 
Uh, guy definitely is picking some of the food up off the floor and like reassembling it on the plate, and then he kind of like follows. <laughs> and I'm assuming Jupiter tags along as well. Yep. Yeah. So you all let you know go back to the the elevator, um, and you slot your your key card, key, um, and the door like kind of like half like cracks open like two inches and like just like closes back shut like it's like trying to open and then it shuts mm. every time you slot your key i don't Got think it. we can go in this yeah elevator. and also yeah, kind of like i don't go for it charlie i was gonna say there's just like in the hallway especially there's just like yellow and red lights just like flashing it's like eh, 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 eh. and then you hear like intercom messages being like like all non-authorized personnel please meet in the mess hall all non-authorized personnel to the mess hall, please. Quick question. Wait, well, I want to do something really fast before we go. Okay. Um, to, in order for you to open the door, you need to have the key scanned. Yeah, it's like a slot. You slot it in and okay. slot it out. I was wondering if uh, I'm if I could uh, ask, I'll ask Scott for the key and see if I can uh, slot any of the other doors. Seeing if the, the the power somehow messed with the locks, and I want to try and get into the uh, the business man's room. Okay, um, you walk to the room that you so you didn't maybe see exactly the room that you they came out of, so you just try the first door handle nearest you to see. Um, you slot the key in, and you notice like the light that you know the indicator light of whether it's locked or unlocked on the door handle is not even lit. It usually is like mm -hmm. green. You slot it, it turns orange or red, depending on the key, and the door handle opens. You like just like press the door handle down and make a luck save. Mm. Didn't make uh, it. No, 11. Uh, it seems like on the power going out, the, the deadbolts secured into place. And now that you try this door knock, knob like guy can confirm for you like oh yeah like i had to manually open the deadbolt for our room and i and i didn't even lock it when we came in so okay. it seems like when the power shut down just for like a critical safety you know measure it just like ching, just like locked all these doors into place mm. okay cool all right uh that's all i wanted to try i guess we will just head to the mess hall well you can't the elevator is door won't open oh we don't yeah, have guys guy like not having this broken elevator like he's like he like it does that whole close thing he turns around he's like nope so as far as the stairs you don't see it's just a hallway with an elevator at the end now it is metal panel flooring like that expanded metal flooring you see in spaceships um so it's like metal panels all the way down the hallway but you don't okay. see, see any exits besides just the uh the cabin doors that are here oh wow this is, is like there a is there a like a emergency button on the elevator? Like sometimes they have those buttons. Not on the outside that you can see. There oh, is boy. there is below the key card slot a uh, like a, an actual keyhole that you could put like a physical key in that you assume might open the panel. Guy kind of looks at Jupiter and is like, "You think you could get that elevator open?" I can try. All right, Jupiter, you can make a exert check um, if you want, because the doors are like, and when you slot the key, like it does open like two inches, and like it's like it's trying to open, like, and then it like slams back shut after a few seconds. So if you slot, you know, slot the key, it'll open up. And you can get your hands in there and try and tear it open if you want to do it with your your brute force, and that'll be an exert strength check. Pretty heavy door. It is, yeah. So you slide it like maybe a foot open. You think maybe just enough that someone could slip in if you timed it right, but you're not able to oh, ho God. hold it. You pull your hands out and it like, boom, slam shut. This is a thick, you know, spaceship door. It seems like this door could possibly be airtight even, like it's an airlock door. Could um, could we try again? And, and this time I, I'd like, I want to position my nunchucks to where it catches the door. Well, so one side of your nunchuck is probably only about a foot wide. Um, okay. It would open it up enough, you know, I guess for one person to slip underneath. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, 
So I'm going to say like the exert check uh, rides. So you're able to open it back up to that same width, you know, a few more times cool. before, before you kind of burn out your strength. Um, so Hikari, I think I will have you make to stick your nut. Yeah. Fix. Can I make a fix check? You could um, on the actual like electronics of the door if you wanted. Um. <clears throat> yeah, let's let's try that. I, I'm efficient in fix. <clears throat> All right, so you uh, intelligence. Do you have a meta tool? Um. Probably not, unless you specifically bought one at character creation. Yeah. No, I have a med kit, compad. And no, no okay. meta tool. So uh, you can do a fix uh, intelligence, but I'm going to give you a minus one without the tool to it. Okay. Fix intelligence minus one. So you bust the, the kind of electronics pad by the door or buttons open. Ooh. And you look for, for a few minutes and like you pull out like a little, do you have like a mono blade or any kind of knife or anything like that? Um, no, I think I would be carrying like a, a Gerber, like multi-tool or whatever, but okay. it's okay. not, it's not something I specifically have in my gear. Um, I guess I, I would have some type of repair kit in order to fix my stun chokes or whatever to like adjust them. Well, so that's but something, it, it, again, it, like, if you, you. if you didn't buy that a character creation, I'm going to say you can get that, but you don't have it now. You don't have any okay. anything that can be used as a tool. You have no melee weapons or bladed weapons. I have uh, I have the stun chucks. I have the laser pistol. Does anyone else have a, a knife or melee weapon, bladed weapon? I have this I have this plate that I could probably just break. The uh, plate? <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's good enough to cut and strip wire with. Okay. Uh, can I just go back to the room and see if I can grab a knife from a uh, dish, the the plate set, the yeah, whatever? They ba had based on room? how high, high your roll is, uh, you had a minus one and you almost got maximum. It looks like it didn't subtract the one. Let's see, five plus six plus one. Oh, yeah, it did. You were almost out of 12, which is like yeah. very high. So, yeah, you go back in the room, you find like a steak knife. Like, I'm talking like a dull ass, serrated, wooden handled steak knife. And you come back out and you like just pull this chunk of wires out from the elevator panel and you're like thinking like, well, like usually in small ships, like, you know, the red is is power usually and whites with like the black pluses on them are almost always the, the ground. So you like cut the ground wire first and you like, you know, start stripping it with this steak knife, like stripping rubber back from the wiring. It takes you quite a while and you like wire it into a bolt on the side of the ship for a ground. Um, and then you like start splitting this red wire from the elevator um, to splice it into like the the red wire from the door panel. And after a few minutes of stripping wires and cutting wires with this steak knife, it takes you a few, a few, <laughs> a few minutes. You really jimmy rig this thing. Yeah, um, I'll use my teeth too. Yeah, and you're like biting shit in half. You like touch yeah. these two red wires together before you even get a chance to spool them. Like the light above the elevator that shows what floor it's on, and like the button pad, which is now like hanging out of the wall by wires, like lights up. And you like twist the wires together and stand up, and like now the all the lights on the elevator seem to be lit. The door's still closed, however. Okay, um, I'll I'll, I'll press the uh, the um, elevator call button. Um, see if the door opens. Well, so yeah, or if uh, if um, guy slots his key card now, so guy, yeah, you like I slot your, slot your key card in like this like panel that's like hanging out of the wall by a mess of wires. And pull your key card out, and the door like opens all the way up and stays open, as seemingly normal. The light in the elevator, however, is flickering on and off. Seems like we, this is the only choice we have. Guy kind of pokes his head in the elevator, and he looks and sees if there's like an emergency call button. There is. Yeah, he presses that. Um, so you hear a phone ring happen, like a. And it just keeps going. So no one's answering. Oh, crap. The intercom is still going off, though, in the elevator and throughout the entire ship. All, of honor all unauthorized personnel, please report to the mess hall. Seems like we're going to have to go down to get some answers. Find out what's going on. 
Guy kind of looks around and he's like hoping that he can like not do that, but he realizes that that's like his only option at this point. <laughs> I, I I go in the elevator first and I, I'm sort of like uh, I I jump up and down to make sure it's secure and that that the the weight distribution's not making it tilt too much. Not tilt, but yep. like. Uh, Guy like jumps at every like time you jump up and down. Each time he's like, "Stop, stop, stop, stop!" Like, <laughs> it all seems fairly sound from what you can tell. Cool. I mean, the lights flickering. It's still disconcerting, but like your jumping doesn't seem to dislodge the elevator or anything. The buttons are all lit up as if they were ready to be pressed inside. Okay, I hold the door open and motion them to come. Yeah, I think they they yeah. file in behind you at this point. You want to press the button and go down? Yeah, I'll go down to uh, the mess hall. So you press the button for floor level one, the common area floor. Um, all three of you make a luck save, please. Group luck mm -hmm. save. Oh, no. So if you don't have it turned on, like Guy, I don't know if you have it turned on. Um, no. So click the cog in the top right of your character sheet. Okay. And is the, this the same scene? The very top left option is add a luck save. Yeah, this is all the same scene. Okay. A cool. scene is generally like in between short rests. Uh, okay. Uh, now do I press the uh, cog again? Yep, you, <gasps> I, I did it for you. And then you press, um, under saving throws at the very top of your sheet, you'll see luck, V15. Go ahead and click the V15. The v Sorry, I'm not seeing saving throws. So oh, V15. Got it, got it, got it. It's all right. Crap. So two out of three of you succeeded. So the elevator starts going down like mm, very slowly, much slower than it did before. And then it drops like three feet, like cocoon, but stops just in time. And like, you hear the brakes like eh, squeak to a stop and they open up and it just starts like eh, going back down again at like two miles an hour after about a, a 45 second long ride with a few of those little jumps in it. And each time guy just like, he like yelps even louder, and like holds yeah. on to Jupiter, you know, when it like drops yeah, down yeah, two I feet. Mean, I was just going to say. Guy is like squeezing the life out of Jupiter. Like he's a little <laughs> old man, and he is like holding onto Jupiter. Like it's like for like some reason Jupiter could save him. Uh, finally, the elevator reaches the bottom floor, and the doors like <gasps> open up, and the common area is now uh, you know extended out in front of you as a hallway that leads down to the mess hall and a few other places in the common area. And still, you know, the entire ship is pretty much black. Illuminated only by the glow of like the red signal, you know, alarms flashing at the kind of tops, uh, top corner of each hallway, and also the small like arrow lights that like run in a little marquee down the sides of all the pathways, pointing you where to go. Um, and yeah, so you guys walk through the hallway. Um, it opens up into the mess hall, and in the mess hall. Um, you see, you know, people, all of the kind of lodgers or the people who are on the ship as um, passengers for transport have all like gathered in here, all the people you've been kind of sharing the common area with. It's about 30 people or so gathered around and there are, you know, um, Cervantes employees like trying to calm everyone down and gather everyone in and tell everyone like, you know, um, you know, our, our manager is going to get up and talk in just a moment. He's going to give you all the lowdown on the situation. Everyone just please keep calm. They're like passing out cups of water. Um, you kind of join this big group, um, and as you do, this like this kind of younger fella with a thin wispy mustache and a Cervantes uniform with some stars and bars and some other like, you know, um, decorations. You know, he seems like a decorated member of the company, kind of dotting his sleeve. Stands up and silences everyone and begins to explain um, what's going on, and that's where we'll pick up next time. Oof! Awesome. I'm into this. Awesome. That was a great session. Oh man. Oh, man. So next time we'll come back we'll come back with the Cervantes employees explaining what this giant um, power outage and kind of uh, you know disruption that's happened on the ship. The entire ship shook like some like someone was shaking it, you know, for a second. Um, so yeah, we'll come back next time and you guys will find out what happened. Oof. All right. That's super fun. Heck yeah, that's great. And uh, I just want to say, um, so to, in the session, we will say everyone.
Sorry about that. Yeah, so my name's Charlie Chop Shop. I am the game master here on the Chop Shop Network and on Space Case, the space opera podcast and stream. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. You won't regret it. We put out a lot of fun content. Uh, if you're following on Twitch, or if you're watching on Twitch and you haven't hit the follow button, please do that. Um, and yeah, if you are listening to us on podcast, uh, subscribe, check out the next episode. Um, we'll be back next week with another one. Um, and yeah, thanks to all my lovely players. We have Ruben from Kid Tested Mother Approved. Uh, Ruben, what's your socials? Give us some of your socials. Yeah, so Kid Tested Mother Approved. Anything uh, social media. So Twitter, we are KTMA Show. Uh, Facebook, we are Kid Tested Mother Approved. Uh, I think that's really, like, social-wise, that's really all we're at. But uh, yeah, we're on iTunes or Apple Music or whatever it's called now. We're on every major podcasting platform except for Spotify. Um, but everything else, you can just Kid Tested Mother Approved. That's us. Yeah, and uh, for those of you that don't know, Kid Tested Mother Approved is a show that Ruben does with his wonderful mother, Dawn. It's a movie podcast. They give each other themes and movies to watch, and they discuss it. It's really hilarious. It's heartwarming. It's family-oriented. And it's about great movies, and they have really good taste and uh, op opinions. So definitely check it out. And um, Hikari, do you have anything you want to plug right now? Um, no, not really. Uh, I mean, I have an Instagram and a Twitter that go. It's the same name, Falsaries. Um, uh, I will be having a, a Ilvermoony, Ilvermoony Harry Potter Dungeons and Dragons campaign soon. So look forward to that. I don't know if I'm going to be streaming that yet, but uh, we'll see as it goes. Definitely. Uh, well, I'd like. Yeah. I'll. I'd like to talk to you about. Yeah, maybe streaming or podcasting that or any way I can help with that too. So we'll have more information on that next episode for everyone. But yeah, go follow at Falseries, uh on Insta and all that other good stuff. And we'll have some more uh, information on the Harry Potter Ilvermorny campaign next time for you. Um, yeah. Easy Sailor, Professional Troll, I'm not going to give you any plugs because I know you don't want them. But uh, thanks for being here, man. Yep, been fun. And uh, we'll be back next week. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. We'll see you then. Shop.